Welcome back. You're still watching NTV Weekend Edition with me, Sandra Twinoglio. Now, tonight on Talk of the Nation, we talk about uh, the recently concluded retreat at Changkwanzi, where the elected NRA members of parliament and uh, some of their leaning members concluded this meeting, where they spent a lot of time, of course, with the president discussing different issues. Some of the issues that came to the forefront was uh, oil sector, agriculture, export markets, as well as the contentious parliamentary speakership race. So tonight, we pick the thoughts of David Lee Livingstone, who's the member of parliament elect for Wutenbe constituency. Welcome to Talk of the Nation tonight. Uh, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. All right. Now, as a member of parliament elect, what does it mean for you? Of what importance is it to you to attend such a retreat with the president and more or less to the people that you lead? I think for me, it's really, I, I'm glad I made the decision to go because initially I used to associate uh, Chankwanzi with NRM and I thought that it was the monopoly of the NRM. No, many people don't consider it as a national leadership institute that sh should benefit all. Um, when we think about uh, transforming mindsets, changing mindsets, you know scripture says that be transformed by the renewing of your mind and I think the highlight for me with uh, Changkwanzi was that it really unveiled a lot of things that I was uh, looking at with uh, a skeptic uh, mindset. So it was really a mind opener looking at um, ideological orientation, looking at uh, Uganda from uh, a security uh, perspective and our strategic interests which will inform how I legislate with uh, Uganda as the primary beneficiary of everything that I want to say and do. Being a farmer also it really uh, resonated with me when the president's cry went out all the time that we must transform Uganda from a peasant society to a middle class uh, society through commercialized agriculture, which is not only agriculture, but agriculture with calculation. Being a sugarcane outgrower farmer, for me that really stood out because hitherto I have done agriculture, but calculating whether what I have been doing in sugarcane farming would have brought the best uh, results compared to other crops. I think that my mind has really been uh, shaken and uh, light brought about. So would you say this retreat actually sets uh, a standard for how the newly elected members of parliament will conduct themselves in the 11th parliament? It, it really does because there's a lot to learn. Like they say when you stop learning, stop leading. I think we come to uh, the house uh, after Changkwanzi, more informed, more enlightened, put on a uh, a, a, a foot where you start with a bit of stability as opposed to coming with a lot of passion that is unguided. And that's why we resolved in the, among the resolutions we made as uh, members of parliament, we resolved that uh, Changkwanzi should not be for NRM members of parliament only, that even uh, the side that is usually referred to as the opposition should also be invited and given opportunity to come to Changkwanzi so that as we start to legislate, we are all at the same level. We have acquainted ourselves with each other, we have known each other, we have understood why certain things should be done a certain way, why we should follow a certain direction. All right, now speak to us about the issue of the speakership. We did see uh, the deputy speaker being present, mm. but the speaker wasn't there. Uh, what did this mean and did it sort of uh, show uh, that w the party is leaning to one side and not the other? Uh, not necessarily because before we went to Changkwanzi, uh, what, what we know is that the president called both candidates, well the candidates that are vying and uh, gave it, uh, it a directive uh, that the campaigns should stop so that we should focus on uh, learning and that we should uh, focus on finishing parliament business because they have a lot of things that they had to finish. So uh, the speaker not going there, I believe, was in the spirit of first and foremost honoring uh, the president's advice that they should stay away from uh, politicking and electioneering so that they concentrate on other things. As for the deputy speaker going there, I am not sure why he was there and the speaker wasn't. Perhaps he had, he had other Did things to do. Did you sort of do. have a discussion uh, on who you would vote, on <coughs> who would be supported in uh, uh, the 11th parliament? Uh, not, 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 not officially. We, were all, uh, we, we, we chose to adopt the president's wisdom to stay away from electioneering about speakership until the right time comes. And, and focus on the issues that affect Ugandans from absolutely, different constituencies. Absolutely, because after the elections, we will have uh, the, our constituents to account to. Mm. 
All right. Now, speaking of the of the issues that affect different constituencies, we mm. just want to specifically speak to yours. Yes. You were here not so long ago, and you passionately talked about the issues affecting the people of Busoga, sugar mm. prices, mm. and mm. the like. Mm. Has your position on that changed? Well, I mean, the sugar question, as I said, is still uh, pertinent and is still pressing. But I think what I will add to that is to educate and sensitize my people to practice commercialized agriculture, but with a chivalo, what M President Museveni is calling a chivalo, is that you have to first and foremost decide whether you are going for extensive agriculture or intensive agriculture. Extensive is where you have enough land and you, go for you might go for low value uh, crops like sugarcane, which I will uh, explain here, or maize. And then one who has little land might go for intensive agriculture where you go for high value crops like coffee, like uh, onions, like um, crops where you put in a certain amount and then you get a very high return uh, over uh, after a shorter period of time. I'll give you an example. When you farm sugarcane, your investment per acre is 2.7 million Uganda shillings and your return on investment upon harvest is 3.6 million. But you don't harvest sugar. Now the millers are asking for 36 month old sugarcane. That implies that while you have your one acre of land, you have invested 2.7 million. After three years, you only realize 900,000 as a return on investment. When you break that per month, your acre is giving you 37,000 Uganda shillings. When you compare that with someone farming coffee, for example, who will, who will get uh, about 15 million per harvest, and they might harvest three times in the course where you harvest once, they will be making 45 million on their one acre in 36 months while you make 900,000. That's why we are now, uh, the conversation should be, if you are to farm sugarcane, you should be an extensive farmer who has enough land mm -hmm where cumulatively then the returns do make sense. But if you have one acre, you have two acres, you have three acres, the returns are so minimal, and yet your land is occupied for 36 months, you can't grow other things. I think it's time to transition, but that transition should come from an informed mind where we go back as leaders and sensitize our people and teach our people. Because usually we, we tend to lament and uh, blame the leadership, blame the government, blame, blame the president. But I liked uh, how General Kavuma uh, interrogated and gave us an, an example of Paderi district, which has 250,000 people, population. When you look at the different levels of leadership, up to 50,000 of the 250,000 are leaders, people in leadership positions. And yet the people's problems com, uh, keep on, uh, I mean, are consistent. What is the problem? What are those leaders doing? Because God has given us everything. Our country is endowed by nature. We have green cover. We have water, uh, uh, fresh water for that matter. We have fertile soils. The government has given us, has uh, created relative security, established infrastructure. So God has done his job. The government has and continues to do its job. It's now the people who must come up to... Uh, well, now we're now speaking passionately about people and what leaders should be doing for them. Mm. What are some of those areas, just in general, from the retreat that you had, mm. that you think need to be revisited to see that the constituency's concerns are mm. addressed? I think, first and foremost, I think information is power. Is power. We need... Uh, some of our people really don't put into consideration why they vote a, a certain leader. We have seen, because politics is highly commercialized, people vote for whoever gives them the better, a, a, a bigger dollar. And then at the end of the day, the leaders are not effective, and the consequence is that it's the people to suffer. So I think that we shouldn't detach leaders from the people that they lead. The, people, the leaders should be accountable to the people that voted for them. We should go back to the people and articulate issues and help open their minds because there needs to be a mind change even from the voters point of view. So for me as a sugarcane farmer, the people in Butembe are expecting me to demand that the president gives them a sugar factory, to demand that the president buys their sugarcane which they cannot sell elsewhere. But the president has always emphasized do not go for raw materials unless you are sure that there is market. So the responsibility then doesn't fall on the president, it falls on us, the leaders on that lower level, and the people also that we should 
put, uh, we should have a synergy in our conversation so that we are able to move together and take, uh, get our people out of poverty, not because of what we do, but what they also do in return. Well, as we conclude our conversation tonight, you from Butembe, people of Butembe are probably watching you tonight. Mm -hmm. What are the key things that you're going to advocate for once you enter the 11th parliament, not so far from today? Mm. I, uh, it's unfortunate that um, we, are ge we might get be getting into parliament after the budget will have been passed by the outgoing parliament. So really, like my view would have been that the new members of parliament have an opportunity have a say. Yeah, have a say in the budget that is going to affect their tenure, their first year. But we're going to get into there after the budget, after people have already determined. Now, it is I, our job to uh, appropriate. It's to look at the budget and how our constituents, constituencies are benefiting, but we are getting there when it, that has already happened. So as I sit here, I don't know what the budget that is going to be uh, read to the people what Wetembe is getting out of that and how I would have changed that. So when we get into the budget and we're able to look at it and see what is allocated to the different sectors in our own constituencies, then we will be able to just follow that to ensure that there is equitable implementation of the budget. But as of now, we are not the, determ we are not the ones determining what is and what is not in the budget. All I right, think that is an oversight. All right. Uh, thank you so much, David Livingstone, for joining us tonight on Talk of the Nation. I do believe that your, your people will definitely hold you accountable uh, for all the promises that you made uh, when you were seeking uh, to be voted. I look forward to that. I look forward to leading together with the people. Mm. And I look forward to uh, really advocating for uh, commercialized agriculture so that we get our people from Pisa and to a middle class uh, agriculture with a chivalo. <laughs> like the president says it. All right, it's I thank you just so much. Thank Thanks you so for much for me, joining us tonight on Always Talk of the Nation. To be here. And thank you as well for joining us on Talk of the Nation. NTV Weekend Edition will continue shortly, so do not go away.